My name is Stephanie. I'm from Canada and I studied a Master's of Arts and Human Rights. I am a teacher. I'm a high school humanities teacher and social sciences teacher. I took this particular degree because I spent three years in China working and living there and uh, traveling around Southeast Asia and the living conditions of the people that I saw and the different types of human rights violations that were happening in that part of the continent made me wonder how our country is allowed to get away with this without being called out on an international level. We don't have programs like this in Canada at our universities, this specialized and really focusing on human rights. So that's what drew me to this university was the specificity of exactly what I got to study. Academically, the most surprising thing I learned was just in generally how the world works and how countries are able to um, do what they do and get away with it. Uh, personally, I was able to realize that um, time management is the key to com accomplishing anything as I worked full time as a teacher and I still managed to have a social life, go to the gym, go skiing, hang out with friends, go to trivia nights and all that all at the same time. I was able to apply the different topics either to international context or to Canadian context. So in one assignment I got to study um, the Indigenous land disputes over the pipeline extensions in Western Canada which is land that I lived on that was an issue that directly affected me and dive deep into how is the Canadian government able to do this, what are both sides of the argument, but on the flip side I was also able to study uh, why certain countries in Southeast Asia are also able to get away with certain things that they do um, and the treatment of their citizens and whatnot. While studying online, I was able to connect with others in my program through our discussion boards. Uh, each week we had to post different discussion comments, questions, and uh, we had to go through and comment on each other's. So I was not only able to learn from the readings, from the professors, from the videos, uh, but also from my fellow classmates who had different life experiences to bring to what we were learning. On top of that, there was actually at the same time that I was doing it, there were two other girls who were doing the same degree same program, who also lived in Vancouver. So I ended up running into them whenever we had to go and write our exams, which was pretty cool. And I was the teacher of one of their brothers, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> the university supported students through the pandemic, I think quite seamlessly in the sense that I graduated, or I finished rather, June of 2020, which was right when the pandemic hit. But the program itself, was completely online as it was, so it was like business as usual. I was still, as I was always was able to reach out to my professors when I needed to, um, get responses back right away. It, it really just continued like there was nothing else going on in the world because we were already on that platform and it had already been perfectly sorted. I was writing my dissertation at the time, and so my dissertation supervisor was fantastic. We had um, lots of online meetings where we were going through my work, but it was exactly the way as it would have been had the pandemic not hit because they already provided that online support so, um, so well. How it's helping me though now as a teacher is that I am a senior school geography teacher and I focus um, on human geography, which has everything to do with human rights. When you're talking about demography, world population issues, where people are settling, lack of access to clean drinking water, lack of, lack of access to food, all of those things I studied in my human rights degree and are directly applying to my students and to into my classroom. So I'm able to share that knowledge with my students because they are very inquisitive. They want to know why the world works the way that it does and how they can find their place in it. This helps me to do that. It helps me to explain that. It helps me really get them passionate about it so that hopefully in a few years when they are 18 years old and contributing citizens to society, they can help enact the change that we need. The advice I would give to prospective University of London students would be to time manage, make a plan. That was the key to my success here, was to make a plan. I knew what my schedule was, um, you know, Monday to Friday, I also coached sports teams and all that. So sitting down, whether it was on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or a module basis, sitting down and making a plan to say, these are the nights that I'm gonna work on my course and I'm not gonna do anything else those nights, those nights are set aside. But when I'm not doing 
coursework. When I don't have coursework scheduled, that's when I'm off um, skiing, trivia, shopping, going to see movies, going to the theater, doing anything with my friends, anything outside so that I kept that work-life balance, or I guess work-work-life balance, because without that, you're going to burn out. You're going to start to disengage with what you're learning, not because you don't want to learn, but because your brain can't handle anymore. If you burn out, you cannot intake new information. So really, if you're a prospective student with the University of London, look to say, how much work can I realistically accomplish every week and move forward that way. Don't burden yourself with too many courses because you want to just finish quickly. You want to do well, so take the time that you need, follow those plans, and it just flies by. I would absolutely recommend the University of London degree, actually I have already to a few colleagues, because of the flexibility with learning, which is great. But somebody who's able to learn independently, to absolutely um, recommend the school. The professors are incredibly, not only knowledgeable, but friendly. I wasn't ever hesitant to reach out to a professor to ask for help, which I can't say the same for my, um, either of my undergraduate degrees. I was, I never wanted to ask questions, but these ones were very open. They clearly wanted to help. On top of that, there's a huge variety of programs as well, which means that whatever you're interested in, you can target your interest in that particular thing. It feels awesome to be graduating today because I've been waiting for this for two years, right? I actually had uh, a, a trip completely planned and whatnot for the summer of 2020 to come to the UK with my dad um, to be able to celebrate whether my graduation ceremony was happening or not, but whether to just celebrate because he's never been over to uh, Europe before. But uh, so to be able to bring him, to show him everywhere, it's just, it pulls in the family. This was an independent study, but now it's a family event.